Hi, this is uh, Bob from Hobby Concepts, and today I am going to do a custom build on this Tamiya 770S kit. Now, I did one of these a little while ago when the kit first came out just to show putting it together, but I promised I would show lighting it up. So in this video, I'm going to do a complete custom 770S. It's going to be camouflaged. It'll be a NATO tank hauler truck. It's going to use buyer electronics. It's going to have everything lit up, everything working. Uh, it's probably going to be a multi-part video, probably at least three or four parts on the truck. But I'm going to do even more. I'm going to take one of these Diecast Masters uh, low boy trailers. I'm going to rebuild it, modify it, paint it in the same NATO camouflage and put a buyer uh, trailer lighting system in it. And then I'm going to take this and long leopard tank and make a load for the trailer. The tank's going to require a lot of painting and some extra detail. I may even do some electronic work on it, I don't know for sure. So probably five parts in this video. It'll probably be over the next couple of months. Uh, it should be pretty interesting. All kinds of custom stuff. Uh, I think you'll really like it. I'm going to enjoy building it, I know. So let's get started. So let's do an overview of this crazy new build that I'm going to do. Um, well, the starting point is obviously the Tamiya 770S truck kit. And I mentioned when I did the video on building that first one that I was going to do one I'm going to light up. So this is the one I'm going to light up. It's going to be a killer truck, just tons of custom features. Obviously, we'll be using the buyer. Um, SFR1 uh, sound and light system to control the truck. So that's the first part. New to me a truck kit. Second part is this LESU chassis um, that is uh, already assembled. Uh, it has got their um, gear reduction drive, it's got locking differentials, it has obviously front wheel drive also, um, gorgeous, gorgeous chassis, metal diffs, extra heavy duty servos, really, really uh, going to be a nice solid foundation. So we're going to have to customize and fit all the 770S parts to this chassis, which will be kind of intriguing and it'll sort of be one of those uh, I'll be learning as I go. So you'll learn right along with me. Uh, I've got a lot of area to fill here over a normal 770, so that will be kind of an interesting project. Um, it's going to get all kinds of LESU and other company um, extra attachments, um, including this gorgeous LESU bumper. Um, so we'll be seeing how that works, but I've got a lot of these are like light lenses, spotlights. Uh, it's going to be lit up like a Christmas tree. I've got some extra side plates so I can fill in the chassis. We'll be doing that. It's going to get this scale club equipment rack. So package here, which is just gorgeous. Um, so, yeah, um, we'll be seeing to that, and that'll, that'll be a, a beautiful feature. It even has the V8 logos in Boston and grills. Oh, that's a beautiful piece of equipment. You're getting that. Trailer-wise, we're going to use one of these... Uh, Diecast Masters uh, low boy trailers for the starting place and it'll be completely modified. I'm going to beef it up. It's going to get painted. It's going to get lights and it's going to use a buyer um, Bluetooth light module to Bluetooth to the truck. So it'll have wireless lights and, and some extra features that uh, you'll get to see when we do the trailer. And then on the top of the trailer it's going to get this pin long leopard tank. Now, I haven't done a lot of tanks, uh, or a lot with them. I, I've actually built a bunch of tanks, but you've only seen one video. If you go way back, you'll see my Tiger tank. 
Uh, this is a a premium uh, version of their Henlong tank. It's got metal tracks, metal road wheels, metal gearboxes, metal barrel, all kinds of metal parts that aren't painted. So we'll be painting it and uh, detailing it and that'll be the load on the trailer. We may even change the radio gear in it. I don't know. I haven't gotten that far yet. But uh, <laughs> it's a heavy, heavy tank. So it's going to look pretty good. This whole project is going to be done in NATO um, green black and brown camouflage. Uh, obviously the German kind of uh, colors, we're going to have this base as a, uh, like a German uh, army truck pulling this trailer and this tank. It's going to be a complete integrated unit. It's going to be almost eight feet long when it's all built. It's huge. So it'll be quite a project. It, it'll be coming over many parts. Um, I don't know how many, but probably at, at least one part on the trailer one or two parts on the tank and probably four parts on the truck, I don't know, over the next couple months. So um, it's going to take a little while for me to do it, but I kind of wanted to hit this overview and just talk about some of the prep work I'm doing before I actually start the building. So that's what we're doing here. So one of the things about doing a project like this is some of the planning ahead. and. I'm building a military truck. It's not going to have a bunch of chrome on it. So these parts here are all going to be painted either in camouflage or in black. And virtually every part is going to need to have the chrome stripped off. So since that's uh, one of the first things to do, my favorite way to do that, of course, is to take the parts, throw them in a pan, and uh, I use this product called Super Clean, which I get at Walmart. Pour it in that uh, muffin tin, or that muffin tin, that little, little bread pan, and it'll take the chrome off of these parts easily in a few hours. Now, a few parts, take for example these, these are the rear view mirrors. Well, we're going to want those to stay chrome, so we're going to keep those chrome. I'll go through here and just pick out if there's any other parts that I want to leave chrome, but I don't think there are. These two tread plates here, um, that one I'll probably leave aluminum, but all these steps and window, or window, uh, front little gr grill parts will all get stripped and probably all get painted flat black. So I'm going to start by putting all those parts in a bin and getting the paint stripped off. Now you might say, hey, Bob, that chassis already had wheels on it. Uh, yes, it did. It has aluminum rims on it, but uh, we're going to switch to the plastic rims because they paint better. So I will be stripping these and painting them NATO green to start with and then detailing them out as I build the truck and these nice aluminum rims will go on another project. So anyway, we'll get stripping on these and then I've got a bunch of body parts I have to think about laying out and uh, primering and painting and figuring out the interior colors. So I'll start thinking about that. So my chrome parts are um, in the chrome remover and I've clipped out the, uh, the body parts that I want to paint. I'm going to go ahead and wash these with dish soap and water primer them with some Tamiya primer and then I will be painting them with NATO green. I'm going to paint everything NATO green and then we'll do the camouflage later. So one thing I did discover on this chassis is that um, the front end is not right for the European trucks. They have a servo that's turned 90 degrees. The steering servo is over on the side because the body kind of mushes back a little further. So I'm going to have to modify the chassis, drill the holes for the servo mounts, move the front axle back, which is going to mean the drive shaft is not going to fit. So there's always something. So I'll be kind of looking at that in a little bit. So um, I have a bunch of parts uh, in primer right now waiting to be painted. And while I'm letting that dry, I need to kind of figure out how this is all going to fit together. Now there's several challenges. Uh, the first challenge is that this motor doesn't fit
fit through the floor plate for the 770. So I'm going to have to modify the floor plate. That's not a huge big deal. But I am going to have to move components around in order to fit. I'm going to have to turn a servo 90 degrees and mount it in here, cut off the front of the frame, move this back, and probably remove these mounting bosses and open this up so I can drop the floor in the right place. Uh, once I get that done, then I can mount the correct uh, bumper mount and kind of get things figured out as to how the body's going to fit. It's a little bit of a challenge. What I've done is I've taken the, um, the side frame from the 770 kit and mounted a transmission in it so I can kind of get a, a look about how things fit together and where the floor plate fits and then I've got to drill some holes in here and thread them and I have to drill holes in the side frame here so that I can mount a, uh, a servo. This is, a, this is going to be actually a lot more of a project than I thought. If this was getting a, like a globe liner or a king hauler body it'd be a no, no big deal. Uh, but converting it to a Euro truck is going to be a big deal. I don't think I'm going to have to move the transmission, but I am going to be moving the axle back, which is going to mean cutting this. So I'm going to start by pulling the servos out, pulling the front end apart, and pulling the, the front end here off so I can get an idea of where I've got to drill the holes. Okay, I figured out what I'm going to do here. I... Uh, I've got the, the motor set in its original location here and I took this floor plate and cut the hole bigger so the engine would fit and uh, the rear bosses mount in this little gap right in front of the motor mounts. So, and I cut out the center bosses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill these rear bosses, which are these right here, and then I will base every other hole off of that location. So that'll be my starting point because I got to get the, the body set. So I'll drill the suspension mounting holes, the steering bracket mounting holes, and all the other holes and then cut the frame off because it's going to be moved back uh, to match the front of this. So that should give me a good location. It's interesting. I have to go right off of just the back holes just to set everything else in place. And this will shorten the chassis up about an inch and will shorten the front suspension rod up a little bit. Fortunately these um, slide in and out so I can just cut this off and and uh, it'll still work just fine. So anyway, I'm going to start drilling holes. Before I start, one thing I just want to mention is uh, I use this so much, thought I'd just mention it again. I showed it in another video um, before, but this is a drill-tap combination. So what I do is drill with this and it, it drills a starter hole and then taps it because these holes on top are threaded. Uh, this is a set that I got off Amazon and the three millimeter tap is the one I use all the time. I haven't actually used the other ones but I, I like having the whole set. So what I will do is center, I, I screwed this back down so it's solid. I will center punch these two back holes and then use my side frame to line up all the other holes and I'll, I'll show you what I mean here in a second. So I've, these are the two transmission mounting holes and these are the two new holes I drilled for mounting the body pan. So this is my alignment hole right here. So what I have to do now is drill a hole here and a hole here. So the way I do that is just carefully line this up and then use my 
my little etching tool to make a line. And then I'll use a center punch. Pardon my head here. To mark a dimple. And then I'll drill it with my, my drill. Now you'll notice that this hole right here is not a threaded hole, it's a drilled hole. So I'll drill and thread this one, I'll drill this one, and I will use the same method to do all these holes along the side in the same location. So I will just mark them with my frame and punch them out either with a regular drill or a threaded tap until I get the same holes uh, in this frame as this frame. And then my reference hole, again, is right here. You can see that this frame is longer. So I'm going to need to shorten the frame. And I will do that with a, uh, with a hacksaw. Um, and a prodigious use of my bench sander to square them up. So I'm going to go ahead and drill a bunch of holes in this. Well, I continue to paint parts. These, uh, these wheels are all done. And those are NATO green. They turned out really nice. Um, I also have got the rest of the parts from my chrome stripping. So you can see just what kind of a paint job this is going to be. All of these are going to be painted NATO black. So I'll be doing that uh, with an airbrush uh, along the way. Well, yeah, yeah, all these are going to be NATO black. Body's going to be green, and then it'll get the NATO black and the NATO brown camouflage. So. Yeah, lots of painting. Well, okay, uh, finally have got the uh, steering and the front end together the way I want. Uh, this chassis has been a real pain and it, it uh, basically proves my point. When you modify something, it changes five other things. So trying to convert the chassis over to the Euro style was, was tricky, had to drill a lot of holes chop the front off, move the servos, reconfigure the steering, but it all worked out pretty darn good. All I have to do now is hook up my my pull cables for the um, uh, the locking diffs and those will thread up through here and mount to the servo and then reinstall the, uh, the engine and transmission. Um, to do that, I've, since I've moved the axle back, I'm going to have to cut this drive shaft and cut this shaft here, which it looks like a hardened piece of steel. It's going to be like cutting a socket in half, so that's going to be a project too. Uh, but anyway, I'll cut those. Neat transmission. Um, this is made by Scale Club, and uh, I've seen a couple websites where you can get it. I'll, I'll put a link in the description to a website called WTB Car um, that I noted has it in stock. It's got a, a, a built-in shift servo here and a shift slider, engines inside, and then of course it has the output shafts for doing a, a front driving axle. So this had already been mounted and it, it just drops in place fine. It's just shortening up that shaft. So I'll go ahead, shorten the shaft, get this dropped in. Also, I um, decided, or more or less it was decided for me, to go back to the aluminum wheels because since this is a front driving axle, it doesn't use the wheel style that has bearings in it. So I'm painting the aluminum wheels right now and we'll get those back on. So once I get the tires and wheels on, I should be in pretty good shape on the, on the uh, chassis itself and I've got most of the body parts painted so I can kind of go to work on that. I probably will kind of start with some of this rear end uh, back here the fenders and stuff because I'll probably have to drill some more mounting holes for the fenders so anyway get the transmission in and uh, lined up and then I'll be back so I got the uh, transmission mounted the driveline um, reassembled uh, I thought I'd do a little quick test here so I'll use my battery just make sure everything's working it's looking pretty good I'm still waiting for a driveline for the the rear axle and then I can shift second gear, third gear. Shifting is very smooth. Um, steering works good so everything's looking good. I 
got my my base plate cut and it fits fine just like it's supposed to whoops goes this way with uh, four mounting points instead of six but that should be plenty so and you can see I've got a couple of the side um, body mounts on there so everything's looking good I think we're uh, we're ready to proceed along with some more assembly well I've got the uh, the rear fenders mounted supports and the fenders will mount and I got a problem here uh, I screwed up a little bit um, not with my bracketry but with the fact that I forgot that this frame is longer in the back than the stock frame so if I line up the three holes here the frame should be that much shorter so I could I have two choices one I could move these fenders forward and just make new little brackets or two I can cut the frames off and uh, then they'll be in the right place and I am gonna go with cutting the frames off because I'm afraid that uh, if I if I leave them long with this big back bumper I may have some interference problems with the trailer so they need to be shortened about an inch a couple new holes drilled in them I am really getting tired of drilling holes uh, but uh, hey hopefully this will be the last bunch so I'm gonna go ahead and cut those off drill some holes move the rear fender mount up and then I'll be able to place my fenders on top which are screwed up from the bottom and hopefully that'll get the back end of this thing together yay I finally got the back fenders on that was a lot more work than I thought it was going to be and my my bumper fits and it's screwed in this way but I'm going to obviously install lights on it before I uh, put it in place so before I do the bumper one of the things I want to do is get this battery tray mounted and it it mounts like this to the bottom of the frame now I had to cut away some material in order to fit the battery tray in place and you can see that the transmission intrudes now probably a battery would still fit but uh, in this build the battery is going to mount inside this box up above so I don't have to worry about the battery mount but I do need to mount the tray because it has body mounts on the ends of it so I went ahead and relieved it I'll go ahead and bolt it on give me a place to mount the battery to and potentially a place to put the battery if I need it so I got the uh, <coughs> frame shortened so my fenders will be in the right place and I've got this rear bumper that mounts in here like this so now I've got to go ahead and get this rear bumper put together and it's it's a pretty nice uh, pretty nice piece so I'm going to actually show um, some of the details of assembling it so I'll get that put together get the lights in it and then get it mounted on the truck so this bumper um, came with all kinds of additional parts uh, first part is a full width rear mud flap. Um, it's got a uh, piece of uh, diamond plate to cover up the back end. Assortment of uh, nuts, bolts, and screws. And then it's got some light buckets, uh, lenses. There's orange lenses, red lenses, and clear lenses. And then um, it's got this printed circuit board with surface mount uh, LEDs for the lighting. And that just sits in here like this. And has lights for every location. So pretty slick setup and it doesn't take up any room in the back. The fenders will, will go back in here so it it makes a pretty slick installation 
Uh, first thing I'm going to do is wire these lights for my my um, buyer system. So it's got uh, the the plus leads are white, and buyer since they're positive grounded, all the whites will hook together and go to a ground wire. And then I've got uh, they're marked here: left turn, backing lights, brake lights, and right turn. So we'll we'll uh, solder those all together and make a nice loom that I can get up to the front of the truck. And this is this is nice because it'll handle all my rear end lighting on this truck, which is going to have a lot of lighting on it. Well, that was a lot of work. Um, all these lenses have two little teeny screws in them. And then these just mount in here. And this screws on from the back side. So I'll go ahead and mount that. I took the wiring and combined all the positives into one common and then all the negatives I installed a resistor uh, so I can run the voltage that I want to run and those will all have nice long wires that will run up to the front. So I'll go ahead and finish putting this bumper together. I'll mount this, I'll mount these lenses, I'll mount this rear mud flap and the fenders. There's the uh, rear bumper assembled, um, mud flap, the lighting panel, got the wiring done. So, uh, yeah, looks pretty good. Uh, now I'm going to just mount the two fenders to the inside, and I, I glued a couple of little spacers on there just to get everything to fit right. So these will mount like this. I can put the bumper on the truck and get the fenders on and uh, kind of run the wiring up to the front. Should pretty much complete the rear end, uh, probably do the uh, fifth wheel. Before I run the wiring up, I'm going to use some of this uh, spiral wrap and cover it all. It just twists around the wires. Pull everything tight and that'll secure the wires and make them look good. So I will go ahead and cover those and run them up the frame. Okay, here's the completed rear bumper. There was a piece of diamond plate that came with it that I've attached, painted. So uh, you can see my wiring running up towards the front. So that completes the rear end, uh, except for the fifth wheel, which I've got this um, LESU fifth wheel that we'll, we'll just mount right in here. And then I'll go to work on the front end. Um, right now I'm painting some of the top plates for here and the floor plate for here. And then I'll start putting this, uh, this floor plate together. Um, I've also got these side panels and they mount in this area, but I'm going to have a big area to fill here uh, because of the extended length chassis. So I'm going to have to figure out how to do that, design some side plates and some holders. So uh, I will play around with these floor, floor plates first and then we'll take a look at some of these side plates. So as I finish up um, the rear end of the truck, um, I've got this LESU metal coupler which pivots side to side and front to back and I had to drill and tap a couple holes in the frame here to, to mount this so I'll go ahead and get that mounted up and then I, uh, I mounted the fenders on the cab base plate just from the instructions and that is going to sit up here like that see that the fenders fit nicely around the tires everything looks good so before I mount that my next step is going to be to install these little tiny turn signals which to me it does not show you how to light up and so I'm going to light these and I'm going to actually do a lot of lighting in this truck in fact I'm going to light every single thing you can um, and so what I'm going to do is I am going to end this video right now as part one 
and uh, then I'll come back in part two in part two we'll be doing the cab and basically a, a lot of the lighting obviously done the, the rear end lighting and showing just how I'm going to install some extra LEDs I'm going to make these side plates and uh, and get some of the lighting going uh, this truck is is really looking pretty nice um, it's it's going to be it's going to be quite the rig so anyway uh there we go that's that's part one of my uh 770s custom build and we'll be back in, with part two um looking at more lighting and then part three i'll probably do this uh this equipment rack and the final details and get this truck finished and then part four, we'll do the uh, low boy trailer that matches it. So, hey, thanks for watching. This is kind of a, a fun build. I'm having a great time doing it. Very unique. Lots of extra work. Um, give me a thumbs up if you like this video. It, it helps um, with my exposure on YouTube. And please subscribe. And we'll see you next time.